Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom and I've really been enjoying using Lightroom again after taking a break for a while, uh, which I talked about in a previous video, but one of the things that drew me back to Lightroom is just all the powerful tools and kind of frankly, just the fun I can have using them to edit my photos. What I find is I frequently do very similar things to images using the different tools in Lightroom and I've got kind of a, kind of a method, if you will, and it usually revolves around making basic adjustments in the basic panel and then jumping into masking, adjusting light and color, and then kind of doing some overall color grading kind of work. We'll be walking through that in this video. Here is the photo. So if you take a look at the before, that's how it started. Part of the video, I cropped it, straightened it, and hopefully removed all of those spots. There were about a billion, and so that was a lot of fun. But I think I got all the spots and I'm currently there, and all that's been done other than the cropping and straightening and spot removal was done right here in the basic panel. And like I said, that's really where I start. I think that's probably where everybody starts. Uh, what I normally do after that is start to jump into masking, which is right here. And there's a lot of powerful tools in Lightroom for masking, including one of my favorites, which is in the range mask section called Luminance Range, commonly known as a luminosity mask. It's just a mask based on light values just really gives you tons of amazing control over your image. And that's really what I find myself doing is using certain tools that give me powerful control over the light and the color. And even though they're powerful and useful, they're really easy. And that's why I like Lightroom so much. So uh, when you get the luminous range mask or luminosity range mask or luminosity mask, um, you can make a lots of different adjustments. And if you'd like more videos about how to do this in a little bit more depth, I'll happily come back and do that. In fact, I did a poll in a newsletter of mine uh, once, and a lot of people were talking about masking both luminance range and uh, color range masks, among other things, in Lightroom. So if those are interesting to you, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, but I'm going to start with the luminosity mask, and what I'm going to do is uh, spend the majority of it kind of over in the highlights with a nice generous fade uh, kind of into the midtones and probably a little bit past that. So something maybe about like that. And my mask is in that purplish area. And what I want to do is just take the exposure down slightly. So I'm going to do like a negative, you know, 38, something like that, 37. That looks fine. Uh, while I'm at it, though, one of the things I love about these masking tools is it basically opens what's essentially another instance of that basic panel, which is just full of amazing, useful tools, right? Shadows, highlights, contrast, all that stuff, but also temperature and tint, texture, clarity, all that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the temperature up. I'm going to go to about a 30 here, and I'm going to take the tint up to 49. I actually nailed it. Look at that. That was pure luck. Uh, but what I want to do is create a little bit more of the vibrancy that I saw in this sunset. That's one of the challenges with raw files is uh, especially this. This was in like 2012, I believe. And this was a, a full frame camera, a Nikon, but it's fairly old. So, you know, we're talking 12 years ago that I took this. Anyway, the raw files are not as great as they are nowadays. Uh, so I didn't get as much color and all that in this raw file, but I can bring it back. That's the beauty of raw file and the power of using these tools in Lightroom. So 30 and 49 on temperature and tint respectively. And then I'm going to do texture and clarity. I'm going to do negative. I'm going to do like a negative 41 or 42 on both of these. And all I'm trying to do is just kind of smooth that out because as you saw with the mask, it's mostly the sky and some of the water. There it is. And now you can refine that mask if you want to with the brush and that sort of thing. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I like that mask. I think it covers mostly what I want to do to that portion of the photo. And now that I've done that, one of the other things I love in Lightroom is clicking these three dots and duplicating and inverting the mask. So it just takes, uh, it makes a copy of the mask and then it gives you the exact opposite because what I want to go do now is actually make some further refinements to this. So. I'm going to do that and I'm going to see, I'm actually going to go like that. So the, I'm slightly changing the luminosity mask, but that was a quick way to get me to essentially pretty close to the opposite. And because that's focused on the darker areas, I'm actually going to bring that up a little bit, brighten it slightly and add a little bit of texture and clarity. So again, in this case, because I'm the opposite of what was mostly or generally the sky and water, this time I'm kind of on the building and the reflection. So I'm adding a little bit of crispiness with that texture and clarity and a little brightening with the exposure slider. That's all I did. And having done that, I want to keep playing with the light. And another one of my favorite masks is the linear gradient. And I do this all the time. And I just come in and I drop this linear gradient over here. 
Uh, instead of using a vignette, I often find myself using a linear gradient a couple of different times. And all I'm doing is just going to darken that lower bottom section. And it just creates a little bit more contrast in the colors as well. And that's going to play, uh, play well, I think, with the color moves that I make here in a minute. And now that I've done that, I'm going to do a very similar move. In fact, the same move, but I'm going to do it in the sky. Uh, and what I like to do is a pretty generous fade, which is this gradient zone between this upper and lower straight line. And what I want to do is move most of that off of the image and then just kind of gently drag that fade into the image. And what I'm going to do here is darken it as well. Not as much as I did on the other one, but maybe, maybe something about like that. If you look at the before and after on this mask, before and after, it's kind of like adding a vignette. Obviously, I didn't put anything on the sides, but I could. But in this case, I just kind of want to darken the sky a little bit. Plus, that upper super, you know, very high part of the sky, especially on the right-hand side of the photo, it's kind of boring. Uh, and I want to darken a little bit, create a little bit more contrast in the water. So uh, now, now I've got four masks, a luminance range, an invert of that, and then two uh, linear gradients. And I'm going to go back with one more mask. And this is also another luminance range mask. And this one is just going to be something that I squeeze into the midtones. And this is a fun little trick. Sometimes I'll come in and just isolate the midtones. Uh, and I like to drag these little triangles to get kind of a generous fade. Uh, that's because that's, uh, that's kind of the gradient zone between uh, where this square exists and the middle of this slider and the luminance range mask panel. Um, and these triangles, that, that section there is the fade. Whereas if I drag this in the shadows, and it's you can see how um, abrupt the change is from where the mask is to where it doesn't exist. And as I start to drag it, it starts to fade that kind of gradually into uh, the rest of the photo. I think that helps with the transitions, makes it a little bit smoother, a little bit more gentle, a little bit more easy on the eye. Uh, but now that I've done that, kind of isolated those midtones and done the things that I've done there, I'm actually going to pull that back just a little bit. Maybe pull that back just a little bit. But what I want to do is actually use dehaze. Now, you can uh, overdo dehaze pretty easily. Uh, I'm only going to go to 10. And all it did is just do a slight a bit of contrast, right? So if you look at the before, like the clouds that are right above those buildings, like before and after, right? Also a little bit in the water, especially in that bottom left corner. So before and after. A little bit of dehaze with a... Uh, luminance range or luminosity mask, mostly on the midtones with a generous fade. It just kind of helps a little bit because that dehaze, if you drag it without a mask, I find it's usually a little too heavy handed, a little too abrupt for me, and I don't like that, but a little bit of a luminosity mask comes in handy. So now I've made a lot of light adjustments, and I feel like now I'm ready to kind of do my color fun, if you will. And I'm going to start with color mixer, and I'm going to come in here and just grab this kind of pinkish orange. And what I want to do is just shift the hue slightly left, make it a little bit more closer to the red, increase the saturation a little bit, something about like that, just pretty simple. And then I'm gonna come in and get some of these blues as well. And all I wanna do is take that saturation down slightly. I just felt like there was a lot of blue and I don't wanna overdo it. So I'm slightly dropping that. And I love that about point color. It's just a great tool. And I use it probably in every uh, edit that I do in a Lightroom. But if you look at the color adjustment I've made, especially in those pinks in the sky, kind of orange and pinks, before and after. I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm now going to go into color grading. And um, what I'll often do is stay on this view, which is all three of those at the same time. But because I've kind of written down the values, it's easier for me to jump into each of these individually and just type in the values that I want to use here. So I'm going to go 240 on the hue and the shadows, which is pretty close to the blues. I like to kind of darken my shadows by making them a little bit bluer. I'm going to do an 11 on saturation and a negative 48 on the luminance. So I'm basically darkening the shadows and making them a little bit more blue um, and that sort of thing. So that's shadows. Now I'm going to go to midtones. And midtones, I'm going to put the hue at 19. Uh, so it's a little bit warmer. And I'm going to put the saturation at 9. So all that did is create a little bit more warmth in the uh, in the shadows there, or excuse me, in the midtones. I think that looks good. Oh, actually, those are my highlight numbers. Uh, I'm looking at my notes wrong. This is actually an 18, and that's a five. So it's not really much of a difference, but it's a little bit of difference. And that's midtone. So let me do highlights real quick. Okay, the 19 and nine that I talked about. So if you look at overall, 
before and after. A little bit more color contrast because I'm brightening and kind of adding some saturation to the mid-tones and the highlights, which is going to be those brighter orange. But I also darkened and cooled off the shadow areas by increasing those blues. So it gives you a little bit more color contrast. And that's one of the things I like to do is kind of play on that contrast between the bright, warm colors and the cooler, darker colors. And now I have one tool left, and that's calibration, which is absolutely fabulous tool. It just It's really incredible for colors, and I love it. And all I'm going to do here is do about a six on the, uh, the hue for reds and six on saturation. I'm good with that. With the greens, I'm not going to touch the hue, but I am going to do a 10 on saturation. And then in the blues, I'm going to do a zero there and a 12 on saturation. And so small numbers um, and small numbers in color grading and that sort of thing. But if you look at the before and after for color calibration, there it is before and there it is now. It's a little bit more intense, very slight, very minor, mostly in those orange warm tones, but has a little bit more pop to the photo. So before and after. And that's the full edit using different luminance range masks some linear gradients, various color tools, color mixer, color grading, and calibration, plus some stuff in the basic panel. The point is, you have powerful tools. You can do some really amazing stuff to photos without really you know, having to deal with things that are complicated or hard. I would say the most confusing thing for people is usually luminosity masks, but it's really not that hard. I've got lots of videos. I'll do more. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see that. But if you look at the before, and again, disregard the spots. There's a bird flying. I took out these kind of things. To the best of my ability, I, I'm sure I missed some spots. But before, kind of flat, slightly past sunset. So some of the color had faded, but you know, pretty nice little setup, nice water, that sort of thing. Really brought it to life. Some vibrant colors. And again, season to taste. It's a lot of color. And maybe I should pull those oranges down a little bit. Now that I look at it, it's looking a little bit more uh, intense here than it did earlier. The point is, it's super quick, it's super easy, and you can have some huge, powerful impacts on your photo just using a few basic tools that are easy to use. There it is before, there it is now. That's it for this one. If you'd like to see more Lightroom videos, leave me a comment down below indicating. I'll be back soon, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.